Bronzer functions are often used to model dynamic systems. However, we might want to apply state variable analysis, simulation and control techniques to these systems. To this end, we now look at converting a transfer function to an equivalent state variable model. Since the states are not defined in the transfer function formulation, we have to define the states before we can set up the state variable model. Today, we look at three choices for states that result in standard or canonical state variable formulations. The control canonical form, the observer canonical form, and the modal canonical form. The first standard form we look at is the control canonical form, also called the first companion form. Suppose we have a transfer function model of an nth order system with beta 0 to beta n, the coefficients of the numerator, and alpha 1 to alpha n, the coefficients of the denominator. For the control canonical form, we choose the states such that in the A matrix, the bottom row contains the coefficients alpha n to alpha 1, preceded by minus signs. The rest of the left column of the A matrix contains zeros. And the top right block of the A matrix is an identity matrix. In the B vector, uh, all the elements are zero except for the last element, which is one. The first element of the C vector is given by B, B, beta n minus alpha n times beta zero. The second element is given by beta n minus one minus alpha n minus 1 times beta 0 and it follows the same pattern for the rest of the, of the vector. And lastly, the scalar d is given by beta 0. Let's look at a simple example. Suppose the transfer function of a second order system is given by 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 2. In this transfer function, the order of the system is n equal to 2 the coefficients beta 0 and beta 1 are both 0 and beta 2 is equal to 1. The coefficients alpha 1 is equal to 3 and the coefficient alpha 2 is equal to 2. The state variable system in control canonical form is then given by this A matrix where the uh, bottom row contains minus alpha 2 and minus alpha 1. The rest of the left column contains zero, zeros and the top right block is given by an identity matrix which in this case is equal to 1. The vector B contains 0 except for the last element which is 1. The first element of the vector C is beta 2 which is 1 minus 1 and the second element is beta 1 which is 0 minus 0. And lastly, the scalar d is given by beta 0, which is 0. The control canonical form is a useful form when we want to do pole placement design later in this module, making the design procedure very easy. The second standard form we look at is the observer canonical form, also called the second companion form. Suppose we have the same transfer function of a general nth order system as before. For the observer canonical form, we choose the states so that the system matrices look very similar to that of the control canonical form. Specifically, the A matrix is the transpose of the A matrix of the control canonical form. The B vector is the transpose of the C vector in the control canonical form, and the C vector is the transpose of the B vector in control canonical form. The scalar D is the same as that of the control canonical form. Let's take the same example as previously and write down the state variable system in observer canonical form. For the A matrix, the, alpha, the negative alphas are now in the last column. The rest of the first row contains zero and the left bottom block is an identity matrix, in this case 1. The B vector is calculated from the coefficients as follows. 
the C vector contains zeros except for the last element which is 1 and the scalar D is equal to beta 0 which is 0. The observer canonical form is a convenient form when we want to design an observer later in this module. It makes the design process very easy. The third standard form we look at is the modal canonical form, also called the Jordan canonical form. Suppose we have the same transfer function of an nth order system as before, and suppose for now that the system only has real poles that are distinct. We can then use partial fraction expansion to write the transfer function as a sum of first order transfer functions. Here, lambda 1 to lambda n are the poles, and r1 to rn are the residuals of the expansion. We can now choose the states such that the state variable model has the following form. The matrix A is a diagonal matrix with the poles of the system lambda 1 to lambda n on the diagonal. This matrix is in a special form and is often called the, uh, the matrix capital lambda instead of A. The B vector contains only ones. The C vector contains the residuals R1 to Rn and the scalar D is given by beta 0. Let's work through the same example as before. The denominator of the transfer function can be factorized into S plus 1 and S plus 2, meaning the poles of the system are located at minus 1 and minus 2. We now use partial fraction expansion to separate the transfer function into two first order transfer functions and we easily calculate the values of the residuals as R1 equal to 1 and R2 equal to minus 1. After this, we simply write down the matrix A or capital lambda as a diagonal matrix with the poles minus 1 and minus 2 on the diagonal. The vector B contains only 1s. The vector C contains the residuals 1 and minus 1 and the scalar D is equal to 0. The modal canonical form gives us a lot of insight into the dynamics of a system and will form the basis for some of our analysis techniques.